Hello, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to the Blessed Messages for You channel. Before we dive into today's topic, I'd like to ask a special favor. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing so now. Your subscription helps us reach more people with the gospel message. Also, don't forget to leave a like and share this video with friends and family who might benefit from this message. Your comments are also very important to us as they help us better understand your spiritual needs. Today we're going to explore one of the most profound and transformative passages in Scripture, the Beatitudes. In particular, we'll focus on the third Beatitude, found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 5, which says, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. This seemingly simple statement by Jesus carries a depth and wisdom that has the power to revolutionize our lives and our understanding of God's kingdom. Many of us living in a society that often values assertiveness and strength might wonder, what does it mean to be meek? How can meekness be a virtue in such a competitive world? And what is this earth that the meek will inherit? Over the next few minutes, we'll unravel these questions together, exploring the true meaning of meekness according to Jesus and how we can apply this teaching in our daily lives. Prepare your hearts and minds for we're about to embark on a spiritual journey that can profoundly transform our perspective on what it means to live a blessed life in God's eyes. To fully understand the meaning of meekness, it's crucial that we first understand the context in which Jesus uttered the Beatitudes. These words are part of the famous Sermon on the Mount, a discourse that revolutionized the understanding of law and spirituality. Imagine the scene. Jesus, surrounded by a diverse crowd, climbs a mountain. Among his listeners were fishermen, tax collectors, sick people seeking healing, curious onlookers, and even skeptics. In this setting, he begins to teach, not with complex theological theories, but with a series of simple yet profound statements that begin with blessed. The term blessed, in Greek makarios, goes beyond the simple idea of happiness. It denotes a state of divine blessing, a deep joy that doesn't depend on external circumstances. Jesus was presenting a new paradigm of life, a path to true happiness that challenged and still challenges social norms and human expectations. When Jesus said, blessed are the meek, he was introducing a concept that went against the dominant culture. In Roman society of that time, as in many cultures today, meekness was often confused with weakness or cowardice. However, the biblical concept of meekness is far from this misinterpretation. The Greek word used for meek is praus, which carries the idea of strength under control. Think of a powerful horse, perfectly trained to respond to the slightest touch of the reins. It doesn't lose its strength or vitality, but channels that power in a controlled and useful way. Similarly, biblical meekness is not the absence of strength, but rather strength under the control of the Holy Spirit. This meekness manifests itself in various ways in our daily lives. It's the ability to receive criticism without becoming defensive, to treat others with kindness even when we disagree, to use our influence and resources for the benefit of others rather than for our own glory. It's the ability to remain calm in the midst of life's storms, trusting in God's sovereignty. To better understand what it means to be meek, we need look no further than Jesus himself. He who declared himself to be gentle and humble in heart, Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, perfectly exemplified this virtue in his earthly life. Think about how Jesus responded when he was insulted and mistreated. During his unjust trial when he was flogged and mocked, he didn't retaliate. As 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 23 tells us, when they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. However, this same meek person did not hesitate to drive out the money changers from the temple when he saw his father's house being desecrated. Jesus demonstrated that meekness is not passivity in the face of evil, but a controlled and appropriate response to each situation, always in alignment with God's will. 
the promise of inheritance. Now let's examine the second part of this beatitude, for they will inherit the earth. At first glance, this may seem like a strange promise. After all, isn't it usually the strong and aggressive who conquer territories and accumulate wealth? To understand this promise, we need to look at it through the lens of God's kingdom. The earth mentioned here doesn't refer only to material possessions or physical territory. It points to something much greater, the fullness of God's blessing, both in this life and in eternity. In the Old Testament, the promise of the land was closely tied to God's covenant with His people. It was a symbol of divine favor and God's provision. In the context of the New Testament, and especially in Jesus' words, this promise expands to include the totality of the inheritance that God has reserved for His children. The meek inherit the earth because they trust God to provide and protect, rather than fighting and striving on their own. They experience a peace and contentment that the powerful of this world rarely know. And ultimately, they will participate in the new creation that God promises, where righteousness will dwell. 2 Peter 3, 13 Cultivating Meekness in Our Lives Understanding the concept of meekness is a good start, but how can we cultivate this virtue in our own lives? Here are some practical suggestions. 1. Recognize your dependence on God. Meekness begins with the humility to recognize that we depend completely on God. As James 4-6 reminds us, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. 2. Practice self-control. Meekness requires that we control our reactions, especially in conflict situations. Proverbs 16-32 tells us that better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. 3. Cultivate empathy. Try to see situations from others' points of view. This will help you respond with kindness, even when challenged or criticized. 4. Study the life of Jesus. The more you know and imitate Christ's character, the more you will grow in meekness. Paul encourages us in Philippians 2-5, In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. 5. Practice forgiveness. Meekness is powerfully manifested through forgiveness. Remember Jesus' words on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Luke 23-34 And 6. Trust in God's justice. Instead of seeking revenge or trying to take justice into your own hands, trust that God will bring justice in His time. As Paul writes in Romans 12-19, do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, It is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. The Challenges of Being Meek in an Aggressive World We live in a world that often equates assertiveness with success and meekness with weakness. Therefore, choosing the path of meekness can bring significant challenges. In the workplace, for example, you may be seen as someone easy to pass over if you don't show your claws. On social media, moderate and gentle voices are often drowned out by inflammatory and controversial speeches. Even in our families and close relationships, meekness can be misinterpreted as a lack of opinion or personality. However, it's precisely in these challenging contexts that the true strength of meekness shines most brightly. When you respond with kindness to an aggressive coworker, when you refuse to engage in heated online discussions, when you patiently listen to a family member who disagrees with you, in these moments, you're demonstrating a strength of character that is truly remarkable. Remember the words of the Apostle Peter, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, 1 Peter 3 to 15, 16. This verse reminds us that meekness doesn't prevent us from defending our faith or our convictions. On the contrary, it allows us to do so in a way that honors God and respects others. One of the most powerful ways in which meekness impacts the world around us is through the testimony it provides. 
In a world marked by conflicts, divisions, and discord, a truly meek person stands out as a beacon of peace and love. Think of the impact of the testimony of historical figures like Mahatma Gandhi or Martin Luther King Jr., who faced terrible injustices with a quiet and determined strength. Or consider the testimony of persecuted Christians around the world who respond to hatred with love and to violence with forgiveness. When we choose the path of meekness, we are essentially living out the gospel in a visible and tangible way. We're showing the world an alternative to the cycle of violence and retaliation. We're demonstrating the transformative power of Christ's love in action. As Paul writes in Colossians 3 to 12, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. When we live this way, people around us can't help but notice the difference. And often, it's through this silent but powerful testimony that people are drawn to Christ. Meekness is not just a personal virtue, it's an essential characteristic of Christian discipleship. Jesus, in calling his followers, said, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Matthew 11 to 29. Being a disciple of Christ means following his example in all aspects of our lives, including how we respond to trials, how we treat others, and how we view ourselves. Meekness allows us to be taught, corrected, and shaped by God. It makes us receptive to the guidance of the Holy Spirit and helps us grow in Christ-likeness. Moreover, meekness is crucial in our efforts to make disciples of others. When we approach people with gentleness and respect, they are more likely to listen to the message we have to share. As 2 Timothy 2-24-25 reminds us, And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Opponents must be gently instructed, in the hope that God will grant them repentance leading them to a knowledge of the truth. Finally, it's important to remember that the promise to inherit the earth is not limited to this present life. It points to a future reality, to the day when Christ will return and establish his kingdom in its fullness. The Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 6, 2-3, that the saints will judge the world and even angels. This is an impressive promise of future authority and responsibility. However, it's crucial to understand that this authority will be exercised not through brute force or domination, but through the meekness and righteousness that reflect Christ's character. In the new creation, described in Revelation 21 and 22, we see the final fulfillment of this promise. There, the redeemed will live in perfect harmony with God, with each other, and with all creation. This is the earth that the meek will inherit a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. Therefore, when we choose the path of meekness today, we are not only living according to the values of God's kingdom in the present, but we are also preparing for the role we will play in eternity. Dear brothers and sisters, as we conclude our reflection on this powerful beatitude, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. My hope is that we have gained a new appreciation for the depth and beauty of this teaching of Jesus. Meekness, far from being weakness, is one of the most powerful virtues we can cultivate in our lives. It allows us to face life's challenges with grace and dignity, treat others with love and respect, and experience the peace and contentment that come from fully trusting in God. Remember, meekness is not something we achieve overnight. It's a journey, an ongoing process of submission to God and transformation by the power of the Holy Spirit. There will be times when we fail, when our human nature will manifest in impulsive reactions or harsh words. In those moments, we should not be discouraged, but rather turn our eyes to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who perfectly exemplified meekness in his earthly life. As we leave here today and return to our daily lives, I invite you to accept the challenge of living with meekness. This may mean taking a deep breath before responding to unfair criticism. It may mean choosing not to retaliate when someone offends us. 
It may mean using our influence or resources to elevate others instead of promoting ourselves. Always remember, every act of meekness, no matter how small it may seem, is a seed planted for God's kingdom. It's a living testimony to the transformative power of the gospel. And as Jesus promised, it's the path to inheriting not just the earth, but all the fullness of God's blessings. May we, by God's grace, grow each day more in meekness, reflecting Christ's character in our lives and positively impacting the world around us. Before we close, I'd like to extend a special invitation to you who have watched us this far. If this message has touched your heart in some way, please consider sharing it with someone you believe might benefit from it. Sometimes, a simple word of encouragement can make all the difference in someone's life. Also, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I invite you to do so now. By subscribing, you not only help us reach more people with the gospel message, but you also ensure that you'll receive notifications about new videos as soon as they're released. And last but not least, we'd love to hear your reflections on this topic. How do you see meekness applying in your life? What challenges do you face in trying to live out this beatitude? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your perspective might be exactly what someone else needs to hear today. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Until the next video, stay strong in the faith and always remember, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. God bless you richly.